Hello, you're welcome. You're welcome onto my channel today once again, and it gives me great joy to observe you during this video. I'm Dr. Lion Kai Conley. I am a sociologist. I'm a researcher. I'm a public speaker. I'm a life coach. On this channel, I do a number of stuffs, but all these stuffs I do, you can easily cluster them into four. Sociology, research, relationship, and migration. Meanwhile, if you've not subscribed to this channel previously, what are you waiting for? Kindly go ahead and subscribe and tell others about this channel. If you have subscribed, thank you very much for staying tuned. Today, in this video, I want to address another very important topic in context of sociology. I've seen many students, many professionals who are sociologists complain about how to answer questions in sociology and get good grades. So the title of this video is Excellent Ways to Answer Question, Exam Questions in Sociology. Excellent Ways to Answer Examination Questions in Sociology. If you study in sociology, there will be different times you will need to answer questions. You will need to, uh, to write examinations, whether you are on your A-levels or you are undergraduates or even you are masters or you are even on your PhD sometimes to write examination questions and many people have seen many of my students complain to me even across the world that until they got to maybe 300 or 400 level before they realized the way they're supposed to be answering questions was well, too late especially if you are on cumulative grade point average CGPA or you have to, you have to calculate everything you have registered for in the university or on the program and divide final rate and that will do a lot of harm to the overall result. Therefore I want to answer this question so that you will know the excellent ways to answer examination questions in sociology. Well before going to that it's very important for me to say you have to read. If you don't read, no magic. You're not going to be able to write well or pass. You have to attend your classes, whether virtual classes or physical classes attend your classes. If for any reason you miss class, make sure you follow up and update yourself. Find out from who that are in class if you can make the lecturer or the tutor for a makeup, that's very fine. But make sure that you read very well for your examination, you attend your classes very well as regularly as possible, you follow up if you have reasons to miss classes, then make sure you, you do your continuous assessment. You know, examination is just a part of the assessment. You have examination. Some people, they have class marks for attendance of lectures. Some people, they have continuous assessment, which may be in terms of seminar papers, or in terms of presentation, or in terms of a test. So exam is just one way. So make sure you, you complete your continuous assessment. So now, if you will not want to answer questions in examination, what are the excellent ways? Number one, organize your thoughts. Once you have your questions, organize your thoughts before you start answering the question. Mentally reason how you, how, what you want to say and how you want to say those things, how you want to write them down. If it's a written exam, if it's a, if, if, so if it is an oral exam or written exam, the logic is the same. So make sure you mentally organize your thoughts. You know, don't just double into the examination hall, make, uh, into the examination paper and write answer. Organize your thoughts mentally and be calm. Then, jot your points somewhere. You may flip to the last cover page of your booklet at the back. Make sure you jot your point there. As you're organizing your thoughts in your head, be jotting them. You can do this for every question you have decided to answer. So just the point there, don't just write randomly. Don't just start and think, well, I will be writing as I'm remembering. No, take, take policy time to jot the point per question, per question there before you start writing. Because if you start writing, you may forget some important point. If you ask question one, two, three, jot the point you're going to use for question one, jot one for question two and question three before you start. You are likely to remember, or to remember other points if you have jotted them. You will not forget those ones you have jotted, yet you will be remembering some as you are going. So, judge your point before starting. 
Then, this is very important for my many years of teaching and marking examination or grading examinations, uh, sociology examination. Create outlines. Before you start, let there be an outline. At the first, on the page you want to start a particular question, let there be outlines of what you want to discuss in that question. Once a, an examiner sees this outline, he, ha, he or she has understanding that you know what you want to talk about and these are the things you should, should be looking out for. It can be number one, introduction. Number two, definition. Number three, characteristic. Number four, the body of the stuff. Number five, the conclusion. Number six, the recommendation. And like that. It depends on the pattern of the question. I'm not saying this is a standard pattern. I'm only saying depending on the question and the nature of the question, there should be outlines of what you want to discuss. So when you now pick these outlines, you'll be taking that outline one after the other and be discussing those issues underneath and be underlining in a, in a neat way. You're learning to scan, even if I see that kind of outline, I simply give you mark there first, depending on my marking skill. <laughs> because I know why, this is a very serious and very deliberate student. And I already know, even from the outline, I can look at my marking skill and see what he has covered. And, and, and I'm possibly disposed to that. So be organized. Let that be outline. Then interpret the questions and break the questions down very well. Don't just dabble into a question. Reflect on the question. Interpret it. Which part of the course that you were taught is this question actually targeting? Every question definitely will target a topic. Every question will target a topic <laughs> or a combination of topics. That's the logic. So you must interpret the question and link it to a particular topic you've been taught. Then you are guided on what you what you so you will not on what you write, so you will not miss it, you will not be answering the wrong question with a, with, a, with another answer. So interpret the questions and break the question down very well. Sometimes the question may have diff, four components. One single question may have four components or three or four or five expectations, depending on how complicated the question is. If it's a case study, you know. If it's an applied question, you may need different components of the discipline, of the course, to answer it. They always give examples. This is very important. Sociology is a very practical, a practical discipline. Very practical. Don't just write as though you are writing theory. Even if you are applying theory, if you are writing theory exams, still try to apply the theory into real life situations, real life scenario. We call it scenario analysis. So always give examples. This will tell the examiner that you understand this particular topic. And that's what the examiner wants to test, your understanding of the issues. So give as many examples as possible in that environment, even across the world, to show. So that's what we call applying it. So apply the question, the, your answers to the questions, to real scenarios around. And underline your point before you explain. Don't just model up your point. If you have a point you want to give, you know, just write the point, underline the point, and then explain the point. Don't just keep writing chronologically without explanation. So put the point, underline the point, then explain. You know, it's very important. Then it's always so for you if you are using a concept, even if you have not been asked to define, define the concept briefly. But if the question is about definition, write as many definitions as possible from different perspectives, from different authorities, that means different established authors in that area. So let there be definitions. If you are asked to define, fine, use many, multiple definitions and balance them. But even if you are not asked to define, but you are using a concept, try to just define in passing so the examiner will know that you know what you do. You are doing it. Then try to cite different authors. If you have read, Try to remember some names of reputable authors, scholars in that area you have read and search them and put the date of the book you are citing. So it, it will add value to your answers. I will know that, yeah, he's a sociologist in the making. <laughs> we know that you are an expert to me. You are a professor in the making or you are, you are a practitioner in the making. It shows that you are very deliberate. You communicate that you are deliberate, you are intentional, you are brilliant, intelligent and serious. So, if you remember, cite some, if I'm marking some scripts, I see some authors, I circle them, I give mark. It shows that you are serious. But don't lie about citing authors you don't know, that you have, been, you have never read. 
because the examiner will likely know more than you in that area and they will want to say, oh, this is not correct, it's not a wrong that citation, that will attract negative, will attract negative market. So you have to then organize your work, like I said, let that introduction, the body of the work, the body of, every question will have a thesis statement. If there is a relationship that your question wants to, wants to test, that's what we call the body of the work. So after introducing uh, in this, in this question I will be addressing this, I will be saying this, that's introduction. Then the body of the work, you know, if you are defining, define, you know, the meat, the meat of the question, answer it, then make sure you conclude what's your submission, then what's your recommendation. Then go beyond the class, go beyond what you have been taught in class, always read, go extra mile, read extra, to show that you are really versatile. So, sociology is a very versatile course, show that you are versatile, read beyond what you have been taught in class hard extra you know and be comprehensive be elaborate be exhaustive in sociology don't be too don't don't write too little sociology is about essay i did a video on don't believe about don't believe about sociology sociology is about it's about meaningful essay you know i did another video on strong reasons to love and study sociology these are, you view those videos too. You know, many videos on this channel on sociology. Try to view them. So go beyond the class, then be comprehensive, be elaborate, be elaborate, be exhaustive. Write all you know. Write theoretically, academically, and apply with example. Don't be too brief in sociology. Don't be too short. If necessary, get extra sheets, which you can staple together, or you're fasting with a twine or rope that will be provided by the school. Write as much as possible. But except you are given page limit, which is very unlikely, which is very unusual, very uncommon. To say don't write more than one page, or don't write more than two pages. No, so so is about essay. Once you are not restricted in number of pages, write as much as possible and try to get extra sheets. The extra sheets, extra papers, I mean extra papers, extra writing papers, examination papers, extra scripts, once we get them, write as much as possible. That shows that you know what you are doing, you are versatile, you are comprehensive. Get more shit and write legibly. If you are not typing, if it's not an electronic exam, if you are writing with your pen, make sure you write clearly with good handwriting. Sometimes it's difficult to read some people's handwriting. Even though you are in examination condition, we still have to see what you have written. So write as clearly, as legibly as possible. Carefully write. Carefully write in a, leg in a, in a legible way. Carefully write in a legible way. And be as fast as possible. Because if you are given time and you have so much to write, you may not be able to write, finish. You complete the exam before the, the, time, the time is up. So be fast, moderately fast, to still be legible and be comprehensive. That's very important. And be creative. So be creative as you are writing. Be creative, smartly creative. You know, bring some and be and do your best. Be your best, and you know, and be very constructive and and very deliberate and elaborate. You know, be your best mentally. Dress well for the exam, and remember, education is not a scam. It's the best legacy. It's the best thing you can have. Good quality education is not a scam. Until I see you in my next video, kindly subscribe to the channel and tell others. Bye for now.